This is a Keats apparatus used for preparation of different gases in laboratories. This apparatus was invented by Dutch pharmacist Petrus Corbus Keep. This apparatus contains three chambers stacked vertically over each other. The first chamber extends in the form of a long tube that passes through the middle chamber and enters into the third chamber. This is the first chamber that contains a long tube, extends in the form of a long tube which passes through the middle chamber and enters into the third chamber. Now here is a stopcock to release the gas prepared in the middle chamber. Now here is the stopper which is used to remove the unused gas after preparation of the unused acid after preparation of the gas. Now these are the middle chamber and third chamber that are intact with each other and there is a retention plate which is used for retaining the ferrous sulfide stick enter into it and it allows this one is the first chamber which extends in the form of long tube that passes through the middle chamber and enters into the third chamber and the topmost part is nothing but the thistle funnel. Now ferrous sulfide stick is added into the middle chamber and here is the stop cord attached to it. Now this is thistle funnel. This one is first chamber. This one is the middle chamber containing ferrous sulfide stick and this is the lower chamber and this is the delivery tube containing stopcock and this one is the knob to remove the unused acid. Now I am going to explain the preparation of H2S gas with the help of Keeps apparatus. This one is the thistle felon. Now I am adding dilute sulfuric acid into it. It passes through the long tube into the third chamber. There is no direct contact between the first chamber and the middle chamber and the retention plate present in the middle chamber contains a hollow conical tube containing a small hole that allows the passes of the liquid as well as the gas between the middle chamber and the third chamber and the ferrous sulfide stick should be large enough so that it may be retained into the middle chamber only it should not fall into the lower chamber or third chamber. Now sufficient amount of acid should be added such that it covers the ferrous sulfide stick into the middle chamber. You have to add that much amount of sulfuric acid, dilute sulfuric acid that should cover in the ferrous sulfide present in the middle chamber. Reaction take place in the middle chamber. Here the ferrous sulfide stick reacts with dilute H2SO4 leading to the formation of a H2S gas. Now once the H2S gas has been prepared or is being prepared the pressure inside the middle chamber increases and that push back the dilute sulfuric acid into the lower chamber. It will exert pressure on the surface of the dilute sulfuric acid and it will push it back into the middle chamber that rises into with the help of a long tube into the first chamber. And the contact between the dilute sulfuric acid and ferrous sulfide will be removed and hence the reaction will be stopped. Now let us here the gas has been prepared in the middle chamber and all the sulfuric acid was pressed into the third chamber. I am opening the knob and passing H2S gas into the copper sulfate solution. The copper sulfate solution turns black due to the formation of copper sulfide. Now here you can see that again dilute sulfuric acid starts rising into the middle chamber as the gas has been released and now the reaction starts again and the preparation of H2S can be controlled in this way and when the sufficient amount of gas H2S gas will be released in the second chamber the pressure inside the second chamber or the middle chamber increases and that will push it back into back the dilute sulfuric acid into the lower chamber that increases or rises with the help of a long tube into the first chamber or the upper chamber you can see that the level of dilute sulfuric acid is clearly observable observable into the first chamber it has ascended into the first chamber now again when the gas is released 
the dilute sulfuric acid fall back into the third chamber and rises into the second chamber and the reaction will start again in this way we can control the preparation of h2s gas now here the gas has pressed the liquid into the lower chamber and it rises into the first chamber you can say that the gas present in the middle chamber has pressed all the dilute sulfuric acid into the lower chamber that extend or rises into the upper chamber with with the help of a long tube and in this way we can prepare h2s gas easily in the laboratory which is used during the salt analysis thank you